Fox Sports. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tiger. Tonight it's a pitching matchup of former teammates. The Tigers are Mondo Galarraga shoots for his third win of the year after three strong starts. While Dontrell Willis returns to the Motor City wearing Diamondbacks colors these days making his third Arizona start. It is a warm evening here in the Motor City. Good baseball weather though and we welcome you inside for game one of this three game interleague series featuring the Diamondbacks and your Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Ron Allen, glad to have you with us for game one in this series. The Tigers have won six in a row. They are absolutely dismantling National League opposition. And, Ron, when you look at it, the Tigers offensively have been great, defensively much better, but really it's been the pitching that has carried this team. Well, it all starts with pitching, and they have caught the ball, as you mentioned, a lot better in the last seven games. Only two errors in that span. But when you start to get your rotation going through their regular turn and having quality starts, it's a special thing. And that's exactly what the Tigers have been able to do. First and foremost, you've got Verlander, who has simply been stellar. You look on the right-hand side there, the quality starts. You got the record. You got the earn run average. You got the innings pitch. When you start to have this kind of competition within your rotation and you go through it a couple of times, that's when you can do special things. And the Tigers have done some special things, especially against the National League. They have simply dominated the senior circuit. And we'll see if that dominance continues here tonight at the ballpark. The one thing we can say about this series, there are a ton of storylines. It's going to be fun the next three days. You talk about Dontrell and Jackson pitching against the Tigers. Scherzer pitching against the Diamondbacks. It should be fun. That should be. And you also have Kirk Gibson coming home where he's absolutely adored. Uh, Kirk Gibson meant a lot to a lot of Tigers people. And he's in a Diamondbacks uniform once again. So I'm looking forward to it. All right. Tigers hoping to make it seven straight. Right now with more in our coverage, we go back to the Call Sam Studios. And here's Mickey York. One six in a row. If the Tigers combine for 
three or more home runs in this game. Bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow. Get a free small order of curly fries. You can find a copy of the box score in your local newspaper or at the Tigers page at Fox Sports Detroit. Dot com. So the Diamondbacks come in here this evening, and A.J. Hinch at the helm of a team that is really, really struggling. And for A.J. Hinch, his second season as the manager of the Diamondbacks. Of course, he is a former Tiger who played here in 2003. And here is the starting lineup for the Diamondbacks. It is presented today by Honda Bloomfield. Kelly Johnson leads it off. He's the designated hitter. Stephen Drew is at short. Justin Upton is in right field. Miguel Montero will catch. Chris Young is patrolling center field. Adam LaRoche at first base. Tony Abreu, Gerardo Parra, and Augie Ojeda, the bottom three in the lineup for the Diamondbacks. The scouting reports on Armando Galarraga is presented tonight by Ace Hardware. Well, since it's 80s night, I guess we're going to have a ladies theme to our pitching profile here tonight. I think E.T. was the highest grossing movie of all time. At least it used to be. And uh, galarraga has been out of this world at home. He is 2-0, oh, of course, near perfect here a few starts ago. And also raising Arizona. He is 1-0 oh in his career against the Diamondbacks. Just two earned runs. Gave up one hit against the D-backs. Let's take a look at the Defense uh, put out there by Jim Leland in the ball game tonight. You've got Bosch, you've got Rayburn, you've got Ordonia. Jackson still bothered by that. Those back spasms. You got the infield of Inge, Wirtz, Guillen, Cabrera, Avila. A late addition to tonight's lineup. Gerald Laird was scratched with a stick neck, stick neck, excuse me, just prior to game time. Well, let's see who's in the house. Hey, big Tiger fan Tom Selleck is here on 80s night. His, uh, he looks a lot different these days. I'll just. Put it that way. That was a good show, too. Yeah, Magnum P.I., that was really good. Looking a little stiff these days, but uh, Selleck all right. All right, here we go. It'll be Kelly Johnson to lead it off. He's the designated hitter for the Diamondbacks, batting 271. A D-backs team that comes in limping. They were swept by the Boston Red Sox. There's a strike call on Johnson. We are underway tonight on a beautiful night for baseball here. Temperature is 87 degrees. Johnson with 13 homers. He has power and he takes a little bit outside. One ball, one strike. He has to be one of the bigger surprises in the National League this year with the home runs and the RBIs he's driven in to go along with his 271 batting average. Galarraga nips the outside corner as Brian Rungi goes up with the right hand. One and two. Not many second basemen in that league putting up these types of numbers this early. Here's Galarraga's 1 2 pitch. Fouled back out of play. Well, this is the Diamondbacks team that has lost 13 straight road games. We mentioned they were swept by the Boston Red Sox. So they come in here limping. They are in last place in the National League's West Division. Tigers, meanwhile, have been putting it on all National League teams they have faced here at home. And you also know how draining uh, those games are in Boston. Uh, they were there for three straight nights, and uh, with that crowd. Uh, that Boston has every night along with their offense. Uh, they can really test your patience and they can really drain you in a three game series. 2 2 pitch. Run it full now 3 2 on Kelly Johnson. Not much of a breeze here tonight more of a calm evening. There was a lot of wind blowing in that series against the Washington Nationals. 3 2 pitch. That may have aided the Tigers. A lot of fly balls were thrown by Jeremy Bondervan in that ball game yesterday against the Nationals. They swept that series. They swept Pittsburgh to start the homestand. Bondo looked good again. Again, the 3 2 pitch. And he lost him, ball four. Leadoff man is on. Galarraga has had five starts and since coming back from the minor leagues. The majority of those starts pretty good. You see the numbers two and one earned run average is just a shade over two and a half. Not many strikeouts. Galarraga pitching to a lot of contact and keeping his defense on their toes. And the opponents hitting just 211 against Armando. He's been good. So Johnson is at first base. Stephen Drew will bat the shortstop for the D backs. He's batting 282 with four home runs. First pitch is a little bit high, so Galarraga's 
control not all that sharp early on here. When you look at this Diamondbacks team, it's kind of puzzling the fact that uh, they're not very good, at least in the win and loss columns. When you look at some of the weapons they could run at you with Kelly and Drew and Upton and Young. Reynolds not playing here tonight. 1 0. Driven to center field. Rayburn is on the move. There's the first out of the ball game. Talking to A.J. Hinch uh, before the game in his office, and uh, he knows his ball club has struggled mightily uh, this year, but he also says that he has a very dangerous team, and at times, his team, like most teams uh, that have the kind of athleticism that they have, and they just show up and play a really nice couple of games, and they can jump on you if you don't pay too much attention to him, but uh, those have been few and far between for his club this year. Yeah, and the thing about uh, the Diamondbacks team is their ERA is really elevated as a pitching staff, and the way this Tigers team is swinging the bat, it's going to be difficult for them, you would imagine, in this series, but we shall see. It's not going to get any easier for them either once they leave uh, here. they got the Yankees waiting on them when they get back to uh, their ballpark in Arizona, followed by the Tampa Bay Rays. They've had a tough stretch. They've had a tough schedule. They've had the kind of schedule against the American League clubs that you don't want to have, especially when you're not playing good baseball. Upped in the batter. Well, and that brings up one of the arguments that, that many have against interleague play. I mean, you look at the teams that the Diamondbacks have played this year in the American League, all the really, really good teams in the AL where maybe some other teams might have a, a lighter schedule. No question about that because they are seeing the best teams. This Tigers team is legit. Boston's for real. The Yankees are good. And Tampa is outstanding. And Toronto bouncing ball deep in the hole out of the reach. You have Danny Worth in the left field, a base hit. Upton is aboard. We'll put two on now with one out. Well, you ask how bad they've been. Here you go. They've struck out more times than any team in baseball, and a hundred more times than any team in their league. 100 more and of course if you're giving up home runs and you have a very elevated earned run average it is not a good remedy for success that one number you keyed on is really kind of astounding to me 625 strikeouts I mean you're right I mean over 100 more than any other team I mean that's that's amazing here's Miguel Montero the catcher and he takes strike one they like Montero's back and he just came back off the disabled list and uh, they really like the way that he could hit in that number four spot, hitting 414 since he's been activated. He's got a nice stroke. He's had a breakout year last year, hitting 294 with 16 home runs. He's got an RBI chance here as Galarraga misses outside, one ball, one strike. Well, here's where Galarraga just needs to understand that one pitch will get him out of this mess. If he throws one of those good two seamers down at the bottom of the strike zone, he might get the ground ball. And Defensively, the Tigers have been good their last seven games. They've only committed two errors. One of those errors came yesterday. The Tigers overall playing much better defense. This is a team that has struggled with the glove for the most part this year. Here's the 1 1. That's popped up. This will be an easy out to the left side of the infield. Brandon Inge waiting. Out number two. The runners will hold, and that will bring up Chris Young, the center fielder. Tigers are still last in the American League in team defense, although Cleveland is just ahead of them. Young batting 284 with 46 RBIs. What a difference a year makes. What a difference a year makes. This young man, whew, did he struggle last year? Take a look at it here. Well, he was 189 at this point last year. He finished the season at 212. And that's after they sent him down to the minor leagues for three weeks in August. First pitch sails high, 1 0. Oh. I was asking some people here what's the biggest difference between Young this year and last year, and they said that he's relaxed his hands. He had his hands real high last year. They're not as high this year. And he also has a little bend in his knees, which puts the balance on the balls of his feet and gives him much more balance throughout his swing. And he's been doing a lot of damage this year. I mean, lots of damage offensively. 
As his 46 RBIs would attest to. He's ahead in the count here. Two balls, no strikes. Diamondbacks, a couple of base runners, a walk and a single. This much we do know as well that Colorado, since putting on the Tigers uniform, has been lethal against right handed batters. Very little success have they had against Armando. The pitch. Two and one. The other thing perhaps to consider about Young is the fact that he hit 32 home runs a couple of seasons ago. And after that year, they signed him to a five year extension. Yep. They sure did. Jack Howell, their hitting coach. Jack had a nice big league career. Jack played about nine years in the Angels organization at the big league level. He could hit. Two and one on Chris Young. Bouncing ball right back to the mound. This will get him out of the jam, and Galarraga pitches through some early turbulence here in the first inning. No runs, a walk, and two men left. Here is the Tigers starting line presented by Big Boy tonight. Ryan Rayburn in center field. Jackson is still out, followed by Damon and Ordonez. Big numbers in interleague play. Cabrera, Bosch, Guillen, followed by Inge, Avila, and Worth. That's how the Tigers roll out their starting nine tonight. And meanwhile, down Terrell Willis, the former Tiger, ready to go. First pitch is a ball high to Ryan Rayburn. Rayburn, four out of eight in that series. Against the Washington Nationals. His bat perked up. Good to see. Batting 194 now. Willis again missing. Two balls, no strikes. The D train this, back in town. This next pitch will uh, kind of tell us what the Tigers' game plan is here tonight against Don Trail. If it's a fastball down the middle and he takes it, they're going to be patient. Three balls, no strikes. Damon and then Ordonez to follow here in the first. Willis had 10 walks in his first two starts combined for the Diamondbacks. Six in his last start against Atlanta. And he had a four walk game against Colorado. There's a strike call. Three and one. Three one pitch. Is low ball four. Lead off man is on. Well, the Bernstein advantage brings you the scouting report on Don Charles Willis. Get the Bernstein advantage. We go to bat for you. Well, that whole 80s uh, theme, uh, Peaches and Herb, I believe, sung that song, Reunited. And to walk this way, you brought it up. Don Trail still has had issues with his base on balls since uh, even putting on the Diamondbacks uniform. That's now 11 walks for Don Trail in three games in a Diamondbacks uniform. And strangely enough, the majority of those walks have come to the right handed hitters. He has not been able to. Throw strikes to the right handers. Well, here's Johnny Damon. Left handers he's had no problem with. And missed inside. One ball, one strike. 28 year old out of Oakland, California. Prior to being 
traded from the Tigers was 0-1 with a 6-5-2 ERA in his final four starts with Detroit. Dontrell gave up 14 runs in about 19 innings of work. Before the Tigers severed ties. Damon waiting on a 1-1. Bouncing ball to the right side, diving stop by LaRoche. He'll fire to second to get the force there on a nice play by Adam LaRoche. Also, a gutsy play there by LaRoche with Rayburn running, but the key to the play is where he threw the ball from and the look that he gave to Drew. When he throws his ball, he makes sure he throws the ball on an angle where the base runner, Rayburn, with the white uniform, is not going to disrupt. To throw down the second base to Drew on the inside part of the back. That's a nice job there by LaRoche. One on one out. Who is a really good defender, but he has made seven errors this year in an Arizona Diamondbacks uniform. That is not like LaRoche. Here's Ordonez enjoying a seven game hitting streak. He's had a great homestand. Eight for 13 on this homestand. The last month combined, uh, Magdalene's been the best hitter in the American League. No one's been better from a batting average standpoint and on base percentage. His on base percentage is 470 in the last month. That's getting on base almost once every two times you go to the dish. In the three game series against the Nationals. Look at this. Eight for 13. Couple of doubles, couple of RBIs. And that four hit game on Tuesday against Washington. That's way outside. One and two on Maglio. Well, apparently, Josh Burns, their general manager, is hoping that uh, Don Trail can recapture some of the magic that he had when he was in a Florida Marlins uniform. Uh, he was there for five years. He had a very nice winning percentage. And uh, his earned run average wasn't all that bad either. Uh, but the last three years, Don Trail has struggled in the American League. There's the numbers to prove that. Two two on Ordonez. Johnny Damon, the runner at first base. That's outside three and two. I was talking to Johnny Damon earlier today about the fact that he hasn't run a whole lot this year, and we've been talking about this on the telecast. And he said, you know, when Maglio's up there, guys are pretty quick to the plate. But when Cabrera's up there, they really slow down. It's almost as if they want to dare Johnny to run with Maglia or with uh, Cabrera up there. And he won't do it because he don't want to take the bat out of Cabrera's hand. That's driven high in the air. Left center field. Hit well. Young is back to the wall. And that ball is gone. A two-run shot for Maglio Ordonez, his ninth of the year. You knew this was going to be a tough matchup tonight for Don Trail. One, the Tigers have an outstanding offensive team. Two, they've been getting it done here at Comerica Park. This is our Lincoln Mercury Exmo. It's a fastball. It's three and two, and Maglio absolutely clobbers it. And uh, Maglio continues to be the best hitter in the American League over the course of the last month. He got all of that one to give the Tigers an early 2 0 lead. That was Maglio's first home run since June 3rd, and it traveled 427 feet. And the one thing Dontrell has been fortunate at doing since putting on that Diamondbacks uniform, and he did it as much here a little bit. When he walked people, they didn't score that much, but this time the runs have scored. 99 home runs allowed by the Diamondbacks this year. They just continue to give up the long ball. That's a different look. We've got a camera in a different spot here tonight. Pull outside, 3 0. I like it though. Cameramen moving around here. Creative looks. X moves everywhere. What's up, there Tom? It there it is. Hanging out with the peeps in the front row of the third deck. Three and one on Cabrera. It's another walk. No, it's not. Cabrera discarded the bat and the call by home plate umpire. I bet, I bet your Fox Tracks going to tell us it's a ball. No, Fox Tracks says strike. Ryan Rungi. 
was correct on that one. Three and two. I'll wait this time. Okay, that's ball four. And so it's officially a walk now, second of the inning. Initially, Brendan Bosch was the only left hander in Jim Cleveland's lineup here tonight against D Train. And the reason for that is the numbers kind of speak for themselves for big Brendan Bosch. It doesn't really matter whether it's a left hander or a right hander. He's just been getting some real good swings his first tour of duty in the big leagues. Avila was a late add when Laird was scratched, so there's another left hander in there, but uh, that's what he's done against left handed batters this year. Brennan. Bosch has a rip and fouls it straight back 0 and 2. Well, he's been getting busy in the month of June. He was the uh, American League Rookie of the Month in the month of May, and he has continued his dominance in the month of June. It's really fascinating to watch this kid roll, and the kid is hot. It's a lover boy uh, reference there since it's 80s night. Lover boy, the kid is hot tonight. Tonight is his song, but uh, we've kind of stretched that out for the whole month. Snap throw, and he almost threw it away. Cabrera playing with his buddy. Couple jab steps. Dontrell throws over, then they jar back at each other. They were great friends, not only in Florida, but here in Detroit as well. Swing and a miss. And Bosch goes down swinging. First strikeout for Willis. Two gone. Here's Carlos Guillen. Two run homer by Ordonez. The difference so far. Tigers on top two zip. 368 career against Arizona. And Carlos has been hot as well. Nine game streak for Guillen. Cabrera, one of the two walks that Willis has issued here in the first. There's a strike called 1 1. Carlos in that nine game streak has hit nearly 400 in that stretch. Lines that one foul back out of play. Tigers had to do without Guillen as you see the numbers during that streak. Well, he was on the disabled list, but he just adds another dimension to the lineup now that he is back. I guess you could say, uh, with the exception of Jackson uh, not being in this lineup, this lineup is pretty much clicking on all cylinders right now. Uh, they are getting production from the top, and they're getting lots of production now from the bottom. So uh, the entire lineup has been very efficient. In this homestand. And we were kind of waiting for that. Struck him out looking. Two strikeouts for Willis, but two runs in for the Tigers on a home run by Maglio.
availability since 1849. And by Comcast, call 1-800-COMCAST for TV, phone, and internet as we celebrate, along with Rod Stewart here tonight, 80s night at the ballpark. And, uh, boy, i tell you what. And there's Tom Selleck again. 2 nothing is our score as we go to the top of the second, and leading it off is Adam LaRose. He'll be followed by Tony Abreu and then Gerardo Parra. That's pulled foul, first base side. A little bit of uh, control trouble for Galarraga in that first inning. Walked the leadoff man and fell behind a few hitters, but pitched out of the trouble. LaRoche is hitting 253, safely now in five of his last six. The 1 1. Just saw his brother, Andy LaRoche, who was playing for Pittsburgh. Andy and Adam, brothers, both in the big leagues. In fact, they both played together in Pittsburgh. The 2 1. Swing and a miss and a big rip. 2 2 on Adam. Time with Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Boston. Of course, his dad played in the big leagues as well. Dave LaRoche was a pitcher for 14 seasons in the major leagues. The 2 2 tipped out of the glove of Avila, and so LaRoche is still alive. Two seventy two career hitter Adam LaRoche. And Galarraga missed high, run it full now, three two, another three ball count. While waiting on deck, Tony Abreu. Tipped into the glove this time, Avila holds on to it, and Galarraga has his first strikeout. Right, Galarraga would like to stay away from some of these three ball counts, but uh, he'll take the out here, but he got, has to get a little bit more efficient here. Get some easier outs, pitch a little bit more contact early in counts. Here's Abreu. Batting 293. He's hit safely in 12 of his 14 starts. Showing bunt. This Diamondbacks team, not all that bad when they play at home, but once you get them away from Chase Field out in Arizona, they are 9 and 23 this year on the road. Nine games. Well, we mentioned they've got a 13 game losing streak on the road. That's popped up. Foul ground, third base side. Brandon trailing toward the seats, and he makes the catch. That thing almost was blown into the seats. Two outs. Brandon kind of peeks down to see where the railing is, and then he looks back up the ball, and then he kind of finds his way. Uh, those are your best defenders, the ones that when the ball goes up, and they can take their eye off the ball and go to a spot and know that the ball is going to rest comfortably in their glove. There's Parra with two outs and a strike called by Brian Rungi. Parra hitting 261 with one homer. And Galarraga missing outside. One ball, one strike. Well, the Diamondbacks have really struggled offensively this year. They do lead the National League in pitches per plate appearance. They take about four pitches or see. A little over four pitches per at bat. I saw that too. Which is kind of uh, counterintuitive, isn't it? Yeah, because I mean, they struck out 625 times. So I don't know if they're taking strike one or what, but uh, whatever they're doing, it's not translating very well offensively. At least not for the entire team. They've got some other, they've got some players that are having good years, but collectively they're just not getting it done. A.J. Hinch was working as uh, running their minor leagues when he was uh, called from upstairs to manage the Diamondbacks team last year.
3 2 pitch is on the ground to first base and through Cabrera. Well, you don't see that very often. Miguel has turned himself into a really good first baseman. That ball appeared to be right, hit right at him. Looked like uh, Miggy might have picked his glove up a little bit too soon and the ball stayed down. No, actually, the the glove was down and the ball came up on him and went right through his legs. You usually see it the other way around where an infielder usually picks his glove up a little bit too soon, but that wasn't the case there. Here's Augie Ojeda with two outs. The inning is still alive for the Diamondbacks. Tigers lead 2-0 on the Maglio home run in the first inning. Ada batting just 143. He's been around a while with a couple of different teams, including the Cubs and even Minnesota in the American League. Popped in the air, back a second. Carlos Guillen is under it. And that is that for the Diamondbacks. No runs in air, one man left. Still 2 nothing Detroit. In a Diamondback uniform, it came against the Colorado Rockies, and it was a pretty good start for Don Trail. He got a few strikeouts in the game. Of course, he walked a few as well, but he got a win, and he also had a chance to do what he loves to do, and that's to swing the bat. He got himself a base hit, and he was also able to come around and score a run. So uh, the D train, at least for that night, felt right at home back in the National League. And he's back to work here in the second inning now in his former home. American Park. Brandon Inge will lead it off. Inge, Avila, and Worth, the bottom three hitters in Jim Leland's lineup tonight. Don Trump did not have a lot of success on the field when he wore the Tigers uniform, but he did a lot in the community. Driven to left field. On the move is Parra. It's over his head. One hop up against the wall. Inge coming to second base. Here's the throw. It's not in time. It's a double for Brandon Inge. Brandon Inge got himself a fastball, the predictable fastball count, and he absolutely drilled it to left field. I mean, he absolutely drilled it. He hit it so hard, he had to hustle to get on his horse. Power comes up and fires a seed to second base with a strong arm, and it's the slide that allows Inge to get in safely. Boy, what a slide by Brandon. Brandon Inch safe at second base with a double safe and secure New York life. Just to finish that thought on Don Trill and what he did in the community as far as building fields and giving of his time and his money. Uh, you can't underestimate the value that that had on a lot of the youngsters here in Detroit. Alex Avila is the batter now with a leadoff double. 
Well, Willis, I think immediately after he signed his contract here with the Tigers, decided to. I can't remember what he did. I think he bought a lot of Christmas. He did about twenty days. grand. Yeah, about twenty grand as soon as he signed. And he hadn't even been a Tiger for a week. Here's the 1 0. Good to see a Vila's bat really start to perk up. In fact, in his last 15, he's hitting nearly 350. Vila had a two run double in the ball game yesterday. Which has bumped his RBI numbers up to eight on the season. One one missing inside. Tigers had three near misses of home runs yesterday. And Rayburn hit a ball off the gate in left field of Cliff Cabrera. He went all the way to 420 in center field, just missing a home run. And Avila, you talked about his double. He almost hit it out. So three near misses yesterday. The two one is swung out and missed. Two and two. And the Nationals had a couple knocked down as well. Adam Dunn hit a couple of towering fly balls before he finally hit one out. He's a big man and a strong man. Ange with a double, leading things off here in the second. That's going to get away from the catcher to the backstop. It goes. Montero is unable to haul that one in, and Ange gets to third. Here's the Avila day yesterday. He's been getting busy really for the last three weeks. But when he gets himself in good fastball counts, he's been drilling the ball. That's that double that drove in a couple. And then he made a really nice play from behind the plate. Didn't pick it up right away, but got back to the screen and made a nice grab. Now it's three and two. And then he grounds it foul. Uh, A.J. Hinch is... Uh, Relaxing his infield, they're playing back, which means anything on the ground by Avila will score the third run of the game for the Tigers. With the exception, of course, of hitting it right back to Dontrell Willis. By the way, that last pitch that went to the backstop ruled a wild pitch against Willis, allowing Inge to go to third. Let's see if Avila can get him in. Side. Here's another walk for Willis, his third already in the game. Bring up Danny Worth with nobody out. Worth playing the shortstop position tonight. Batting 225. Willis in another jam here in the second. He surrendered the two run homer in the first. He walked a couple of batters in that frame as well. That was his 37th pitch. And he's ahead 0 and 1 on work. It outside. One ball, one strike. Another nice crowd here at Comerica Park, as it is on most nights. This place is gorgeous. And it looks awesome when it's full. 33,000 plus for the finale yesterday against the Nationals. Fouled away one and two. Kid Rock is here along with Chris Chelios again. Big chill. Big buddies. We're down here quite a bit this season. Good baseball. Great baseball, as a matter of fact, the last six days. They can't stay away. Here's the one, two. Kid Rock asking for some money. Two balls, two strikes. Highly unlikely. <laughs> He's asking somebody for some change. Highly unlikely. He's got his own paper. <laughs> and plenty of it. They <laughs> pocket full of Benjamins. Two and two on Worth. Lead off double by Inja. Walk to Avila. 
fouled off. Dontrell's last start for the Tigers came on 528. It was May 28th against Oakland, and in that game he went five and a third, gave up nine hits. Walked four, struck out five in that game. And that was his last start before making two with the Diamondbacks. It's foul away again. It was Jim Leland uh, in spring training that persuaded uh, Tigers brass to keep Dontrell Willis. As you can imagine, they were kind of split on the decision as to what to do. But he said, you know what, I want to give him one more shot. You know, I, the look in his eye is a good look. And I like the look in his eye, and I want to give him one more shot. And so Jim gave him a shot. And I think it's because of that shot that the Tigers gave him that he found another home in Arizona. And again, the 2 2. Outside, three balls, two strikes. Because had they released him in spring training, who knows where Dontrell Willis would be today? So you know, Jim Leland uh, deserves a lot of credit for you know, Dontrell still wearing a big league uniform. <laughs> Well, Dontrell really had only one start in which he was unable to get into the fifth or the sixth inning. So he was going out there and pitching his innings. That's driven down the left field line. It's going to get down. And the drive in a run. Inge will score. Avila coming to third. Meanwhile, Worth will go to second base with an RBI. And the Tigers lead 3 nothing. That might be their second error of the game. Maybe. We'll see. It should be on par if it's not. Looks like a fastball up that Worth is able to get to. And you're seeing it in slow motion. Looks like a little cutter. Something spinning. And it hits his bat. And he hits the ball in the left field. Parr gets over. He mishandles the ball. And that allows runners to get to third base, which is Avila, who otherwise was not going to go. And it also allows Worth to get to second. Tigers have their third hit of the game, and RBI for Worth is fourth of the year. Well, throughout our communities, unique individuals give their time and resources to help others. People Magazine's All Stars Among Us recognizes three finalists for the Tigers Gordy Van Hatsma, Willie Johnson, and Ed Deeb. And through this Sunday, June 20th, you can vote for one of them by going to peopleallstars.com. The Tigers winner to be honored at the All Star Game in Anaheim, July the 13th. And Ed Deep today on Tiger by pregame was on with John Keating and an opportunity to spend some time with Keats. We've had them all three of them on the last few days. So go online and vote. Ryan Rayburn the batter. Bouncing ball foul. Uh, if you're Rayburn in this situation, uh, there's a couple of things that you'd like to accomplish. If you get yourself in a situation where you fall behind with two strikes, go ahead and hit the ball towards second base. That would get you an RBI, and that would also get Danny Worth over to third base with less than two outs and provide a nice RBI opportunity for Damon. And continue to play the game the right way. They ruled a straight double on Worth. No error was given, so the Tigers have three runs on three hits. Still nobody out. Rayburn walked. Back in the first inning, was eventually forced at second base. Fouled off at home plate. One and two. And Ryan has seen his playing time extend a little bit with the injury to Austin Jackson, who is still out. There was some thought that maybe he might be able to go tonight, but not so. That's about five days now for Jackson. This Tigers offense has rolled pretty good with Maglio off for a little bit and then uh, Jackson out now. They got nice pieces. They've got a nice team. As long as Cabrera's not taken out, <laughs> they're okay. Yeah, there's always a chance that you'll be all right. That one got away from Montero, but not far enough. Two balls, two strikes. Strenuous inning for Dontrell Willis, who has thrown 48 pitches. 25 strikes, 23 balls. And the 2 2. In the air, center field. Young is under it. Avila tagging. Catch is made. And the throw will come into the cutoff, man. Sack fly RBI for Ryan Rayburn. 
first down of the inning. Rayburn gets his 13th RBI. 4 0 Tigers. Here's Johnny Damon reaching out a fielder's choice in the first inning. Damon looks at strike one. RBIs in this inning for Worth and Rayburn. Two for Maglio in the first inning on the home run. Now the 0 1 pitch. Again, Montero down to block it. One ball, one strike. So far in this game, Willis 51 pitches, Galarraga 36 through two innings. Here's the 1 1. One ball to two strikes on Damon. Johnny's been kind of quiet recently. He's so for his last 11, but certainly his presence means something. He's 36 walks, which is 10th of the American League, leads the Tigers. Strike called on the outer edge. Rungi rings him up, and that's another strikeout. Third of the game for Willis. Appeared to be a well located two strike fastball. And Fox tracks the same. It's a hair off the plate, but he got the call. So with two outs, here's Ordonez, who gave the Tigers the lead with a two run shot back in the first. Leo now with nine home runs, which equals his total from all of last year. We are not even yet to July. So say what you want about the rebound year for Maglio. The power numbers certainly creeping back. A lot of people gave up on Maglio last year. It's good to see his resurgence. Bouncing ball slowly toward the shortstop, running scoop there by Drew. And that is that. The Tigers add two more, and as we head to the third, it's 4 0. Romani Eye Institute, the most trusted name in eye care. And by AT&T, find out what's possible with the nation's fastest 3G network, AT&T, rethink possible. By the way, you can vote for your Tigers McDonald's player of the game here tonight using your cell phone, text Tigers, followed by a space in the player's uniform number to 37338. That's F-S-D-E-T. See the final results post game during Tigers Live.
Brought to you by the McDonald's Deluxe Angus third pounder. And the text rate supply. On our way to the third inning, the Tigers have a 4 nothing advantage here. It'll be the top of the lineup coming up against Galarraga. Kelly Johnson, Stephen Drew, Justin Upton. Third. Armando gave up a walk and a single in the first. No damage done. And ball one missing outside. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, my goodness. Wow. I can't even turn around. Oh, boy. This is heavy. <laughs> wow. What's going on? Swaka, what's going on? <laughs> Let me ask you something. Hey. Can I borrow some of that hair? Because I could really what's use going some of that on? hair. <laughs> Eddie's out here at the ballpark. Yeez. Princess Leia's here. Very nice to see you. Don't shoot nobody now. Darth just hanging out in the background, man. <laughs> <What's going on? laughs> That's precious. Oh, my goodness. Two and one on Kelly Johnson. And it's foul straight back. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. I think they want you guys over there on the other side, too. Yeah. Hey, radio's clamoring for you. Yeah. The other TV guys you know, like you over visiting there, Visiting TV, they'd love to see you. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Thanks for stopping in. Hey, thanks for stopping. Have a great day. Drink some water now. It's hot out there. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. <laughs> wow. No warning at all. No <laughs> warning at all. Full count on Kelly Johnson. And Galarraga strikes him out looking. Johnson is caught. Second strikeout for Armando. And let's take a look at uh, this last pitch from Galarraga. A little two seam fastball tailing away from Johnson, and he got the call from Rungi, and it was an emphatic call by Rungi. Take a look at it. Rung him up. Oh. Here comes Stephen Drew. Calaraga has fanned the first batter in each of the last two innings. Drew fly to center his only time up. Had a three-hit game in Boston last night. We mentioned the Red Sox swept the Diamondbacks as they came into town. And Stephen Drew has played 559 games as a shortstop for the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's more than any other shortstop in their history. Ian throws him out, and there are two away. Back to the studio we go. Time for a game break, and here's Mickey York. <laughs> Thanks, Mick. Did he say uh, Manny got booed? Is that what he said? A little bit of both, I think. There's a fly ball foul down the right field line, and that will get us back out of play. I would think that Red Sox fans, you know, there's going to be a bunch of them that are going to boo him, but you know what? They hadn't won a World Series in a long time, and he provided one for you. You look at the numbers Manny put up in the Boston Red Sox uniform, and I know he left them with a bad taste in their mouth. They said he quit on them. And if you watch some of the video, I mean, it looked like there were days where Manny kind of shut it down. But when he wasn't shutting it down, he was getting busy in Boston. Inge gobbles that one up. Up that is gone. A one-two-three inning for Galarraga.
runs in the first two innings, and Cabrera cannot come to the plate these days without us talking about a possible triple crown. You see where he ranks. First in home runs, first in RBIs, but seventh in batting average. That batting average is going to be a tough one, especially with you know, some of the left hands that are having the kind of years that they're having offensively. Robinson Cano would be one of those guys who would lead the American League. Well, Cabrera had a base on balls back in the first. The 0 1 from Willis is a bouncing ball and gloved nicely by LaRoche. Willis will cover for the out. I don't think Cabrera really wanted to swing the bat there. It's almost like he might have been looking for something soft, something off speed, and he got a fastball and his bat got out there too, a little bit too far. We don't see Cabrera swing like this. Not a full swing. Now, he didn't really want to swing the bat there. He tried to hold it up and it ended up still swinging. Gone for Bosch. Oh. Going one on Brennan, who struck out against Willis back in the first. The 0 1 pitch. It's kind of funny how things work out. And you look back and sometimes. You wonder how fate works, but if Carlos Guillen does not get injured and go on the disabled list, is Brennan Bosch in the big leagues? Well, he may have gotten here, but I don't think he would have had the same impact or gotten as much playing time. That's outside. One and two. He was off to a great start. Bosch was down at Triple A, was hitting 379. Guillen goes on the DL. Bosch comes up, and from the moment he got here, he's been hitting. What's fascinating to me is the fact that he ranked 28th in the Tigers minor leagues as far as prospect status was concerned. I think that was a little bit low. <laughs> you think <laughs> as it turns out? Yeah. Just a tad low. Well, we kind of documented while Don Trill wore our uniform the fact that he kind of masters left hand hitters. Uh, he's done that throughout his career and even though he struggled here. Uh, in the three years in the Tigers uniform, he still got left handers out of the pretty nice clip. He's gotten Bosch out twice in this one. Here's Guillen. Bouncing ball to short. Routine for Drew. That's going to be an easy inning for Willis. His quickest inning of the night. One, two, three. Galarraga back to the hill in a 4 0 game. Games for the Tigers during the decade of the 80s since it's 80s night here at the ballpark. Here's your question. A couple of guys come to mind really quickly, but uh, who knows? It's probably one of those guys, I would think. Ooh, you know what? Could be that guy. Yep. That would be Kirk Gibson. Gibby got the nice mustache going these days. Yeah. A little bit of a different look. Thick. Former Tigers bench coach, former Tiger great, now the bench coach for A.J. Hinch. I was uh, joking with uh, Gibby uh, down in the coach's room on the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks side before the game, and he was looking through some numbers, scouting reports and whatnot, and I told him 
Uh, whatever the scouting report is on Cabrera, don't believe it. Just throw him out the window. It doesn't really matter with him these days. And he agreed. Giddy said he likes to watch a lot of our games out west. As you can imagine, he's uh, working for Arizona, but still a huge Tigers fan. His heart is still here. Miguel Montero, the bat. And he drives one of the air deep into right field. Maglio is just going to watch this one sail out of there. It's a home run. Pretty swing. They said he had a pretty swing. There it is. First run of the game for Arizona. Now a four to one ball game. Montero's first home run of the year. He went down, got a pretty nice pitch. It's a breaking ball down, and most left handers like the ball right there. That's their happy zone. Home run number one, RBI number seven for Miguel Montero. Galarraga now facing Chris Young. Second hit of the game allowed by the right hander Galarraga. The other was the single to Justin Upton in the first. Chris Young tapped back to the mound. He's 0 for 1. He waves and misses 0 and 2. Looks like Chris Young is probably going to be their all star recipient this year. Kelly Johnson, their second baseman, also having a nice year, but Young might get the nod. Might make his first all star team. Off the end of the bat, Guillen on the charge. One out. And this is the one thing that he's always done. Uh, even though he has struggled offensively last year, he still brought his glove every single day, and he made some nice catches in Boston. Took a double away from Victor Martinez, and then he went the opposite way in the right center field gap, and he robbed Euclid of extra base hits. So uh, Chris Young can play some defense. Looks like an Austin Jackson. Of course, we've watched Austin Jackson make tremendous plays in the Tigers uniform this year. Here's Adam LaRoche. Strikeout victim of Galarragas back in the second Armando in this game. Picking up a strikeout of the second a strikeout in the third. And LaRoche hammers that one foul one ball one strike. It's a nice infusion of uh, young talented center fielders these days. The young of course talked about Jackson. McCutcheon. Nigel Morton. Some really good center fielders around baseball. And you've got your veteran guys as well. Goody areas out in Seattle. That's in the center field base hit. Tory Hunter still kicking. He's a pretty good center fielder. No doubt about that. There's Tony Abreu. And now three hits for both sides in this game. Abreu batting 289. He's played all around this year for Arizona. Shortstop, second base. He's played third base. He is also DH'd. And he takes ball one. Abreu missed all of 08 with hip surgery. There's another guy that has had hip surgery. There's so many of them now. Lately, for sure. The 1 0. Tigers got two in the first, two more in the second against Willis, and now the Diamondbacks answer with a home run for Montero here in the fourth. First of three between these two teams. The Diamondbacks came in at 26 and 41. A couple of former Tigers in the first two games. Willis tonight, Edwin Jackson tomorrow. There's a strike call. One and two. So two former Tigers pitching against Detroit. And you have the former Diamondback, Max Scherzer, pitching against Arizona. There's Jackson. Looks like Eddie got a little mini Mohawk going. He does. <laughs> the one, two. Two balls, two strikes. There's a better shot. 
<laughs> I guess a little, little speed bump. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> now, was that around in the 80s? I'm trying to think. Now, fades, I mean, flat tops were in the 80s. Yeah. You know, you had the. Uh, what was the cat's name? Kid with the big flat top. It's way foul down the right field line. Had some jerry curls in the 80s, too. Not many Mohawks, though. <laughs> Speed bump. <laughs> Eddie would get the ball here tomorrow, and boy, was he good last year for the Tigers. I know second half he struggled, but the first half he was money. He was fun to watch. Yeah, Jim Leland said as much before the game today. Boy, was he really good in that first half. Mm -hmm. Not quite as consistent in the second half, but the other thing about Jackson was what an influence he was in the locker room. Just smiling all the time. Good people. Real good people. Two two pitch she is low three balls two strikes. Here's his numbers last year. I mean he ended up still with an opponent's batting average of 247 against him his earned run average was under four. He could have been an 18 or 19 game winner with any run support whatsoever early in the season last year. Popped up. Left side of the infield Inge waiting. And I was talking to Edwin before the game and I was asking him about his club and this was kind of just him and I talking he, he could have been negative about his team his new team but he had nothing but positive things to say about Arizona and his time spent out there so far and he was also upbeat about his team's chances of you know starting to get it together if everybody just kind of handles their business and kind of you know plays better baseball we can win some games he was upbeat here is Gerardo Parra well, Jackson is one of those guys who can help get their staff on a roll with what we saw last year. Ball one from Galarraga. Made an all-star team as a Tiger. They're playing behind the runner at first base, LaRoche. Driven high in the air to center field. Rayburn going back, still going back, edge of the warning track to haul it in. Center field just swallowed it up. They get a run on the home run by Montero. Up the middle. I go with Tram. Oh, he was second. Lou, then Tram, then Tom Brookins. Brookie. 1100 games for Brookie. Here's a little uh, 80s video. Lou was sweet. He was sweet. Tigers had uh, 
something that I'm not sure we're ever going to see again. Two guys play up the middle and play for 20 years together. They came up together as well. Both plucked out of Montgomery, Alabama. Brandon Inge leads it off in Javila and then Danny Worth. Inge batting 259 had a double and scored a run back in the second. Meanwhile, his average continues to climb. It's three for ten in that series against the Nationals. Nine hits on this current homestand for the Tigers third baseman. The one two from Willis. Two balls, two strikes. Each team has three hits in this game. Tigers have a homer though. The two run shot by Ordonez. On the ground, sprawling stop by Abreu to his feet. He throws him out. Inch gets a taste of his own medicine. A lot of times at the third base position, it's one, two steps and a dive, but it's how quickly you get up, and then you have to make a nice throw. And Abreu does all of those things, and he throws a close blows line across the dime. Good arm. Well, this game is available in crystal clear high definition tonight on Fox Sports Detroit HD, sponsored by Comcast. Here's Alex Avila. Dontrell, meanwhile, has retired seven straight. Avila had a walk and scored a run back in the second. Driven on a line to right field and caught. About knee high by Upton. Hey fans, have your picnic or party at an upcoming Tigers game. Group tickets, picnic and party suites are on sale now. Groups of 15 or more. Get discount tickets to select games while supplies last. Order your group tickets now at 313-471-BALL or you can always just visit Tigers.com. Here's Danny Worth who had himself an RBI double in the second. Not a secret to... The success that Worth could have up here if he hits. And, uh, he has a chance to beat an everyday player. I guess that goes for everyone, really, but his glove can certainly keep him in the big leagues. It's just a matter of whether or not he's going to be a starter or a utility player. Strong throwing arm, good glove. And he came to the Tigers with a reputation of being a stellar defensive player. Toledo has certainly done its job this year in providing the Tigers with some reinforcements, whether it's Worth or Casper Wells or Brennan Bosch. Enrique Gonzalez recently came up, pitched the other night out of the bullpen. Well, one thing you know as a manager when you leave spring training, and to get you through the course of a season, you're going to need probably 30, 35, 40 players to help you. And the Tigers are on pace to that. Base on balls to the number nine hitter, and that'll be the fourth walk for Willis. That'll stop the string of eight straight retired. Here's Ryan Rayburn, sack fly, drove in a run back in the second. Rayburn had four hits in that series against the Nationals. Also homered on Tuesday night, finished with four RBIs. Snap throw, and he just got back. That's where you always want to dive back to when diving back to first base. Exactly where Danny Wirt's hand ended up. That's all you want to give the first baseman to tag. As much as little as possible. Here you go, right here. Give him just a little bit. You see how far he has to reach to try to make that tag. One ball, one strike. 
Well, Worth had 12 stolen bases down at AAA this year in 44 games with the Munhead. So he, he can run a little bit. Teams have been running on Don Trail too since uh, he put on that uh, Diamondbacks uniform. Five steals. No one's been caught. There you have it. So even though he's left handed and has a good move and is a good athlete, apparently opposing base runners in the two starts that he has had have been able to detect something which has allowed them to run at will. 78, he had that quick third inning, but boy, the first two took a while to get through for Don Trump. Two and one on Rayburn. Oh, look out. That goes a flying. Don Trail looks like he's using a glove from the 1980s. It's 80s night here tonight. And uh, that must be his favorite glove. Looks like he's been using it for a long, long time. Well worn is that glove. It does look like it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. That's, that's an 80s glove. It's 80s night. Well, there's an 80s glove. <laughs> uh, you got to go back a little further for that one. Maybe 1880s? No, we're kidding. That's Mr. Kaline. He was in the 50s. A 50s glove. He won some gold gloves. Sure did. Three and two on Ryan Rayburn. Damon waiting on deck. It's nice to come to the ballpark on Friday and Saturday night. Ground ball to third base. Right there is Abreu. And Rayburn is out. The Rochelle down to the back. Side retired. No runs. A walk. One left. By General Mills Nourishing Lives. Jaguar, visit your local Jaguar dealer to experience the 2011 Jaguar XJ. And by Grown Ups in theaters June 25th. Ah, yes. Michael J. Fox when you need him. It's DeLorean. Complete with 80s garb and the DeLorean-ettes, apparently. They got it going on. Well, it's a four to one ball game as we head now to the top of the fifth inning here at the ballpark. It'll be Augie Ojeda to lead it off and Kelly Johnson and Stephen Drew facing the right hander. Armando Galarraga. Three hits for both sides. Tigers got two in the first two in the second runs that is. Ojeda popped up his first time up so he's over one. Tigers have a new first baseman. Don Kelly. Has taken over for Cabrera. And we will await word on why Mr. Cabrera left this ball game. Hopefully, nothing too serious. Old foul? You would think not. He's been awfully durable. 
and it's throughout his entire big league Cabr career has Cabrera. He plays every day. Every day. We've gotten word dizziness has taken Cabrera out of the game. Oh. One and two, and Augie Ojeda. Bouncing ball to the right side. Carlos Guillen makes the play, one gone. Back up to the top of the order now, Kelly Johnson. Johnson, a strikeout and a walk. Two seventy batting average. First pitch is right at the knees for strike one. Johnson was signed as a free agent in December. He spent 10 years in the Atlanta organization, four of those years, or parts of four of those years, at the big league level. And which meant uh, he learned how to play defense uh, from Rafael Belliard, who used to handle the infielders in Atlanta's organization before coming over here as a Tigers infield instructor. Pull to first base, fair ball out of the reach of a diving Don Kelly. On his way to second, Johnson in there, standing up with a double. It's a great effort here by uh, Kelly. And playing well off the line, reaches for it, just can't get to it. He's having a career offensive year, is Kelly Johnson. Well, a lot of that started in the month of April when he was the National League Player of the Month. He had himself a fine season. Here's Stephen Drew. Tigers lead by three. We're in the fifth inning. Drew looks at strike one. He's over two fly ball and a ground out. The brother of J.D. Drew. He's played more games at shortstop for the Diamondbacks than anybody in their history. Now the 0 1. Steven, a couple of years ago, had one of his better years 21 home run season two years ago. You know, you talk about that shortstop position, but the man that coaches first base for uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks, Matt Williams, kind of set the standard for how to conduct yourself in an Arizona Diamondbacks uniform when he came over from the Cleveland Indians after that 97 World Championship. Well, they didn't win the World Championship, but they went to the World Series. That's into center field to base hit, and that will get a run in. RBI single for Stephen Drew, and now it's a 4 to 2 ball game. And but Matt Williams wanted to get back home to his kids. Boy, did he have some great years in Arizona. Won gold gloves. Hit lots of home runs. You know, he reminds me a lot of Brandon. Or especially Brandon reminds me a lot of Matt Williams, the way that Matt played third base, always moving. And both have shortstop feet at that position. What a player he was. Matt Williams looks no different than he did in his playing days. I was uh, teasing him about that today. Says he's been doing some running. And lots of it, he said. It's in good shape. He's a pro. Here's Justin Upton. Tiger lead down to two. There's a strike called on Upton. Upton has uh, swung and missed quite a bit this year. Although he has gotten a whole lot better. You see his batting average and home runs and RBIs. But he and uh, Reynolds, boy, they are on a pace to... Shatter some records again. Line drive to left, sinking, base hit. But that's what he has. He has a lightning quick bat and a lot of tools. Number one overall pick in the 2005 draft was up. First player taken. Brad Thomas starting to heat up now and uh, doing it rather quickly as Rick Nam comes strolling out to the mound. Six hits for the Diamondbacks as they try and mount a comeback here. Hey fans, as soon as the game ends, our coverage continues with Tigers Live. You'll hear from the manager, Jim Leland, and the players. Plus, we'll break down the game and show you some highlights. Tigers Live from the Call Sam Studios immediately after the game. 
here on Fox Sports Detroit. Rick Knapp has had his say. Del Raga now facing the tying runs on the bases with only one out. And he's got to face the number four hitter. Miguel Montero who homered in the fourth inning. And Montero now seven for 19 since returning from the disabled list on Saturday. And of the seven hits, he's had four doubles and a homer in that stretch. They put him right in that number four spot, too. Galarraga could use a ground ball here. Fouled away. In the fourth inning, uh, Montero went down and got a breaking ball and kind of golfed it out of here. Mad Lil just watched it fly by by. First home run of the year for Montero. That extended his hitting streak to five straight. Now he's perhaps an extra base hit away from tying this game. Four two Tigers in the fifth. Two on Montero. Had knee surgery earlier this year. Had a meniscus problem that he had taken care of back in April. And now off the disabled list. A couple of doubles in the ball game last night at Fenway Park in Boston. Just off the plate, one ball, two strikes on Montero. What a breakout year last year it was for the Diamondbacks catcher. He hit 294 with 16 home runs. Hey, if you got a rocket here, you might want to be careful. Everything you've thrown to Montero here in this at bat has been away. And he kind of realizes right now that you might not want to come inside. So he might take that single the opposite way after homering on a pitch down and in his last time up. Now the one two. Avila down to stop it. Two balls, two strikes on Montero. Galarraga was staked to a 4 0 lead in this game. Diamondbacks got one in the fourth on the Montero home run, and now Drew has knocked in another here in the fifth. Two two pitch. Fouled away. After hitting a breaking ball out of the ballpark his last time up on a breaking ball. All fastballs. For the most part in this ABC Montero. Galarraga again trying to nip the outside corner. And couldn't do it. Now the count is full at three and two. Five straight pitches. All outside to Montero and uh, the man on deck has been their best run producer this year so you want contact right here if you're Galarraga does AJ Hinch dare start the base runners is my next question looks like they are oh and a bad pickoff throw to center field by Galarraga wow and that will advance the runners in the absolute last thing that he wanted there. Ball just kind of tailed on Galarraga. And Danny Worth goes over to the bag and he just wheels and throws from an angle that he threw a two seam fastball there with some nice movement. No shot for Worth. Tigers have their second air. Now a base hit could tie it up. And he lost in ball four. That's going to load the bases. After getting a quick out in this inning, a double, two singles, and a walk. Second walk for Galarraga. Now here's Young. 
Give you looking over the charts. Young is 0 for 2. And twice he has hit the ball on the ground. Which is something that Galarraga desperately needs here. It's going to have to be a bullet. He's only grounded into three double plays this year. He's got some speed. That doesn't mean you can't turn it over, but he's got to hit it aggressively at somebody. Are you going to miss? Young is enjoying an eight game hitting streak. It's a nice slider. Unhittable slider. Galarraga has really slowed the pace of this game down. The pace he established the night where he nearly threw the perfect game, which in the eyes of many he did, was incredible. There's a strike called 0 2. That yeah. game was an hour and 44 minutes. Yep, yeah, yeah. That's a good pitch. Good breaking ball. First pitch comes back with a good fastball inside. He can come back with the same fastball and he might get a strikeout looking, although if you do, you got to be careful. But no doubt he wants a strikeout. And the 0 2. Avila now heading out to the mound. One ball and two strikes on Young. Thomas still warming up. Should be ready to go if needed. They are loaded up here with Drew, Upton, and Montero. Just it away again is. Young would not reach. Two balls, two strikes. And Armando now is watching his pitch count start to run up there. It's 86. Two balls, two strikes. Line drive to left, base hit. Drew scores. Here comes up, and they're going to send him home. Bosch's throw to the plate, not in time. And Chris Young drives in two more. He has 48 RBIs this year. And now it's a 4 4 game. Colorado went inside with one fastball to get strike two. And then he went right back outside on three consecutive pitches. The last one he got close enough for Young to lace in the left field. And what a jump off of second base for Upton. And he got a great jump, and it really was no play at home plate. And even with the arm that Brennan Bosch has from left field. It's going to be it for Galarraga. Brad Thomas will enter this ball game. Armando will not survive the fifth inning. He will leave in a 4 4 tie. Wall side windows pitching change. We'll be back to Comerica Park.
Tigers play the Diamondbacks at 105. All kids 14 and under receive a Charlie Brown bobblehead. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. So Galarraga upset with himself tonight in four and a third, seven hits, four runs. And he's still responsible for two base runners. A 4 nothing lead has disappeared for the Tigers. Still only one out. A three-run fifth inning for Arizona. Strike called on uh, Adam LaRoche. We didn't see Thomas in the Washington Nationals in a series, but we did see him against the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's his overall work this year. A couple of starts in 15 games, four wins out of that Tigers bullpen. And the four victories tied for third among American League relievers with that many positive decisions. And the two starts he made were for Galarraga, or I should say uh, Dontrell, rather. Yep. He is replacing Galarraga here and trying to stand these two runners. One and one on LaRoche. Thomas has made a nice adjustment. Uh, first time stateside in the last four years. He pitched in Korean baseball last year and was a closer for the last two years. 44 saves, so he kind of knew when he was going to get the baseball his last two years when pitching in Korea. But here with the Tigers, he has started. He's come in early. He's pitched late. He's done just about everything for Jim Lee. Two and two on LaRoche. He's got nice firm fastball from the left side. That last one at 93 threw it right by LaRoche in a fastball count. Montero and Young, the base runners. Three runs in for Arizona. They've come back from four down in this game, but tied up. And now try to take the lead. Grounded foul. Adam LaRoche one for two. Both of those advance against Galarraga. Who has that straight up stance, a little bit of, a, of an open stance? Look like a softball player. Yeah. Had a big year with Atlanta back in 2006 when he hit 32 home runs for the Braves. And Galarraga's throwing him three straight fastballs. He's got a pretty good idea of what that fastball is doing now. He might want to throw him a breaking ball here. Thomas, excuse me. There it was, but LaRoche wasn't fighting on the breaking ball. And Avila's been busy back there already today. He blocked several balls in the dirt. Now it's three and two. It's hot down every day. Well, it's 85 degrees right now at the ballpark. This is humidity, too. Yeah, it's a lot of humidity. It was even warmer today. <laughs> Full count. Swing and a miss, and down he goes. As Thomas picks up a big strikeout, two outs. Uh, it's not a strike, yeah, but it's a good fastball. And if you're LaRoche, uh, you got to be in hitting mode, and he was, and he kind of helped Thomas out there. So two outs here is the eighth man to bat in the inning, Tony Abreu. Bray with 294 with men in scoring position. And he hits a ground ball to third deep behind the bag. Inge will run to the bag for the forest to retire the side. Not before. He backs able to tie it up. You're watching Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit. Is that a five? No time.
performance. We flash back to this date, 2006. Kenny Rogers wins his 200th career game. The Tigers beat the Cubs at Wrigley Field 12 to 3, and that happened on Father's Day. And Kenny was the recipient of the game ball and his 200th career victory, and it came at Tigers uniform. The gambler was a pro. He had a really nice year in 06. Boy, did he have a good year and a tremendous postseason, too. Mark Pryor on that afternoon. Mark Pryor, there's a name from the past. Johnny Damon looks at a strike 0 1. Big things were expected out of Mark Pryor. He did do some good things in the big leagues, but boy, injuries. And they said he had a perfect delivery when he left USC. Go figure. Off the end of the bat, slowly toward third. Abreu can't barehand it. Abreu probably could have gloved that first and then exchange it to the throwing hand to get the out, but he made the decision to play it a do or die. When that ball's moving, it's tough to pick up. But I think he probably had time to make a more conventional play. Wasn't Mark Pryor picked ahead of Joe Maurer there? He was. And a lot of people uh, around baseball felt like the Minnesota Twins took a Maurer because he won with a hometown kid and they couldn't afford Mark Pryor. So much for that. Maurer has gone on to be one of the faces of baseball. Tremendous player. Probably a better kid is Joe Maurer. Tigers will see that Minnesota Twins team. Their next road trip. It's a lengthy one. An infield hit for Damon, the fourth hit of the game. Damon needed that now. Maglio shoots one down the left field line, sinking. It'll drop. Base hit. Damon coming to third base. Here comes the throw, and he is safe. Maglio takes second. That's a bad play in left field by Carl. Apparently, he likes to throw. But he threw to the wrong base there. You're not going to throw Johnny Damon out. And so what you want to do is you want to keep the double play in order. You want to throw this ball to second base. But Damon ran right in his face and he threw the ball to third base and that allowed Maglio to get to second. Home play umpire got down there to make the call. That's part of the rotation here. In the air to center field, runner tags, catch is made by Young, and the run will score. And just like that, the Tigers regain the lead. Three batters into the bottom of the fifth. Don Kelly in his first at bat with a sack fly and an RBI. Five four Detroit. Here's Brendan Bosch. For those of you wondering what happened and why the home plate umpire had to make that call on the Damon slide at third, it's because the third base umpire had to go down the line to watch the activity there in left field. So it's up to the home plate umpire to rotate to get down to help out the third base umpire there. It's one thing I guess sometimes we forget about umpires. They, they don't just roll out there and make calls. I mean, they've, they've got assignments. They've got to rotate. They've got to recognize certain plays and, and get to certain bases. And they also have to anticipate. You know, just like your first and third base coaches have to kind of anticipate what's going to go on before it happens. They have to do the same. Shot down the left field line. Slicing, and that ball is foul. Boy, Bosch almost hit it out the other way. Well, he's dangerous. That much we do know. And we also pointed out the fact that left-handers usually don't bother Brendan Bosch, although Dontrell has struck him out twice today. Warm, humid evening here at the ballpark tonight. The Tigers raced out to a 4-0 lead, now 5-4 after the Diamondbacks came back. Bosch hits a slow roller to second base. And Brennan now is 0 for 3, advanced the runner. Two outs. We'll bring up Carlos Guillen.
Ordonez the runner at third. Guillen is 0 for 2. And Carlos came into this game sporting a nine game hitting streak. Dontrell just missed the outside corner with that one. 1 0. Fouled straight back. One ball, one strike. Yan had that walk off on Saturday. Earlier on the homestand, 10 RBIs in his last 12 games. Trying to pick up Ordonez here with two outs. Inning opened up with back to back hits. Here's the 1 1. Tigers now have five hits, seven for Arizona. High pop up, shallow right field. Upton coming in. And that is that for Detroit, but they take the lead. Don Kelly with a sack fly. Can watch the Tigers' favorite replay moment voted on by the fans. It's Armando Galarraga's imperfect game, Maglio Ordonia's walk off home run in the 06 ALCS. Stay tuned tonight for Tigers Live post game. So Brad Thomas back to the hill now. He replaced Galarraga in the fifth inning. Tigers have regained the lead 5 to 4, and there's a base hit into center field out of the reach of the shortstop Worth. And here come the Diamondbacks right back. Lead off single by Para. I guess it's kind of what uh, A.J. Hinch was telling me uh, before the game today, how his team on occasion can be dangerous if they're getting some consistent at-bats from uh, guys like Upton and Parra and, of course, Young, their center fielder, has pretty much carried them a lot this year. Eight hits for the Diamondbacks. They came back with a run in the fourth and three in the fifth. Ojeda is 0 for 2. Thomas came out in the fifth inning, struck out LaRoche, and got the ground ball from Abreu. The Diamondbacks were looking to actually take the lead after Young single tied it up. And you've always got to be aware of bunts and hit and run situations, especially when you're going up against a National League club. Now they play the game a little bit differently than we do. A lot of times in our league, we wait around for the three run home run, but they don't do that a lot in the National League. And Bo Porter, their third base coach, running through some signs for Ojeda. 
that he gets from the manager. So Bo Porter, he uh, almost got that Washington Nationals job. He was one of the three finalists for uh, that Washington Nationals job that went to Jim Riggleman. Of course, Jim Riggleman and his Nationals just left here, but uh, Bo told me before the game he felt like he had a real good interview and he was told as much. So he might manage at some point in time. I did not know that. Played for Texas and the Cubs briefly in the big leagues, 37 years old. Young man. Yeah. We got a long ways to go. Yeah. 0 oh 2. And Augie Ojeda. That is popped up. Is there room for Kelly? There is not. You know, you're talking about the differences in styles between the National League and the American League. The one thing that I always get a kick out of is. How many pinch hit at bats a National League team will have compared to an American League team? Mm -hmm. And Arizona has pinch hit 99 times this year. The Tigers 15. As, well, no, 35. But <laughs> the point is still well made, no doubt. 0 oh 2. I know Hayden. The National League has done a little bit better this year in interleague play, but in prior years, they have just been dominated by American League clubs. Checked it, rolled it foul. Tigers tonight have been out hit 8 5, but they lead 5 4. Brad Thomas earned his first career major league win back in April against Minnesota, ironically, the team that he originally broke in with in the big leagues. Way outside, one ball, two strikes. Oveda spent four years with the Cubs, a year in Minnesota, and this is his fourth year with the Diamondbacks. So he's been around a while. He's 35. One, two. Way high, two balls, two strikes. Thomas overthrowing. And here tonight, a lot of his fastballs have been up to the right handed hitters, which is an indication that you're rushing with your body. Therefore, your arm lags behind your body. And when that elbow drops, you usually get a lot of fastballs that are up. Two and two. It's high now, three balls and two strikes. Man, we've seen a lot of pitches thrown in this game tonight. Galarraga started. Thomas has relieved him. Willis has gone all the way for Arizona so far. <laughs> Kelly Johnson waiting on deck. Leadoff single by Para. He's at first base. Line foul back out of play. First of three between these two clubs. The Tigers winding up a homestand, which has been absolutely fantastic to this point with sweeps of Pittsburgh and the Nationals. Taking on another last place National League team here in the Diamondbacks, although Arizona giving the Tigers all they can handle tonight. Jim Leland knows that you really have to win as many of these games as possible, especially with that road trip coming up. And the 3 2. He walked in. Ball four, and the first two Diamondbacks have reached here in the sixth inning. Here goes Jim Leland. It was the ninth pitch in that at bat to Ojeda, and now the uh, two teams have combined for 200 pitches in this game. Here in the fifth inning. Leland marching out to the mound. Hey, Tigers fans, this season is easier than ever to find the seats you want or to sell the tickets to the games that you just can't make. On StubHub, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Detroit Tigers, go to StubHub.com. 
and choose your seats today. So it's 5 4 Tigers here now with two on and nobody out. Here comes the top of the order. Kelly Johnson will stand in and he's had himself a double and a run scored tonight. He's also walked. Well, if you're thinking that uh, he's up there bunting, you might want to think again. Although the Tigers are looking for a bunt in the infield, Johnson has only one sacrifice bunt this year, and he's been one of their better hitters. But he is going up against a left hander here. But he ain't bunting, at least not on that first offer. Johnson has 13 home runs this year. Nine of them were hit in the month of April when he was voted the National League Player of the Month. Here's the 1 0. And Thomas missing again. Two balls and no strikes. Well, it looks like Thomas having a tough time finding the strike zone. Jim's going to have to get somebody up in that bullpen. There they go. The 2 0 is a strike call. 2 and 1. Johnson didn't like it. He thought the count should be 3 and 0. And it's Eddie Bonine now getting the call down there in the bullpen. It's starting to warm up. Boy, has he been good this year. Warming up quickly. Doesn't take you that long to get loose on a night like tonight. Especially a guy like Bonine that's. Uh, Use to getting ready quickly. Oh, Thomas. Green one. Johnson has 35 extra base hits. Third highest total in the National League. That's what kind of numbers he's been rolling up. 34 RBIs as well. He has put it all together this year. After parts of four seasons with the Atlanta Braves. Now the 3 1. Full count on Kelly Johnson. Nobody out in the sixth. Protecting that time, he sent it back out of play. Three and two on Kelly Johnson. Stephen Drew on deck. So the Diamondbacks have some of their better hitters coming up now. Three two pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And that's a big strike out there for Thomas. That is his second of the game. Right now we go to the studio. Mickey York has a game break. Yeah, we'll see if we can take care of business here, Nick. That's good news from Philadelphia. That Phillies team getting ready to get hot in the National League East. They've allowed some other teams to hang around in that division you know, while they sputtered along from an offensive standpoint. But if they get that offense rolling again in Philly, they're going to be tough to beat. They've got a good squad. They have just too good of an offense to be struggling. They really do. Polanco, Utley, Howard, Worth. They miss Rollins. True. They miss Jimmy Rollins. You see the impact of having that leadoff hitter that can disrupt the opposing pitcher's timing because he can run and also play long ball out of that leadoff spot. They miss J. Roll. Phillies right now are four over, but only three and a half back. Tigers will have a tough road trip coming up. We go to New York first, and then Atlanta. And that New York team is one of the hottest teams in all of baseball right now, along with this Tigers team. It'll be a challenge. No question. And of course, the uh, pesky twins are always very difficult for the Tigers, especially on the road. They're at the back end of that road trip. 
The 2 0 -oh is swung out and missed. Two and one on Stephen Drew. Here you have it, second place, half a game back in the AL East are the Mets. The Braves, of course, they've got a talented bunch in Bobby Cox. His the last year as manager there. And the Twins, they lead the division as we speak. And another three ball count now from Thomas. Three and one on Drew. Ooh, we've had a lot of those today. Drew singled in a run. In the comeback bid after the Tigers had gone up 4 nothing. Looked like Detroit might roll again tonight, but the Diamondbacks not going anywhere. Three and one on Drew. And a bouncing ball hit to the right side. Base hit into right field. Here comes Parra. They're going to send him home, and he will score. It's an RBI single for Stephen Drew, his second RBI of the night, and we're tied up again. Five five ball game. It's a fastball that's up and in, and uh, Gian just can't get to it. Rick Knapp on the phone again to see if Bonai would be ready to go, and they're going to need him right now. Here comes the skipper. So Thomas gave up a single and a walk to start the inning. One out later, a base hit by Drew ties it up again. Bonine coming in. Another pitching change. We'll be back. Since 97, they are 30 over 500 here at Comerica Park and overall really good. And look at those numbers, Rod, since 06. Best in baseball. Best in baseball, their record. And they've really dominated here at uh, Comerica Park. They really have been fantabulous as we continue to work through 80s night here at the ballpark. Eddie Bonine is on now for Detroit with two men on and only one out. He's done nice work. That much is for certain. He comes in 3 0 with a very good earned run average. 16 strikeouts, 12 walks. The opponent's hitting 200 against him. And this much we do know about the Bonine. There will not be a whole lot of three ball counts. He pitches to lots of contact. Lots of it. Here is Justin Upton. This young man here has got a wealth of talent. Before it's all said and done, he will be a, a 30 homer, 30 steal guy. And he'll play some gold glove type right field for you, too. He's got special ability. Special ability. Strike one on Upton, who has two singles in this ballgame. Which is kind of puzzling at the rate that he was striking out at this year. He just has had a rough go of it. Made an all star team last year, did Upton, at the tender age of 21. 0 2. 
Justin was the first overall pick in 05. His brother BJ Upton was also a first round pick, second overall a couple of years earlier. A ton of talent running through that family. And again, they are from the uh, Virginia area. We've talked about the Uptons and David Wright and Zimmerman. Scott Sizemore, all the guys that have come through that area of the country. And he got him. Strike three. Bonan with a big strikeout. That's why sometimes when you get a guy no ball, two strikes, you're better off going right after. And because they're not looking for the fastball right down the middle. Not at all. They're looking for you to waste the pitch. Look at the call by Rungi. Uh, you're out. And you're out again. Two gone. Here's Montero with a home run. That was in the fourth inning. He walked in the fifth. Bouncing ball back to the mound. Eddie Bonine. Nice job out of the bullpen. They got the tying run, but strand two. Here come the Tigers in the bottom of the sixth. Johnny Damon. Coors Light Freeze Cam always <laughs> brought to you by your Frost Brew Coors Light. <laughs> what happened there? I don't know. Your friends stopped by. <laughs> I thought you were going to need a change of clothes after you, that. You got that right. <laughs> I did check my britches. <laughs> well, it's 80s night. Chewbacca stopped by earlier and uh, paid us a visit. Here is the new pitcher now. It is. Blaine Boyer for the Diamondbacks. Well, I mean, if you look up and down at some of the bullpen mates for this Arizona Diamondbacks team, the numbers aren't going to be pretty. He's got 14 walks in 16 innings pitched, seven strikeouts. You can see the league is hitting 306 against him. I have a feeling this is where the Diamondbacks have lost a lot of their games this year in their bullpen with some of the numbers that some of these guys have. Well, the bullpen has an ERA of 7.21. 7 2 1 for the bullpen. And they've given up a lot of home runs, 33. Brandon Inge leads it off. And he takes a ball up high, 1 0. Tigers hadn't played many games like this during their six game home winning streak. I mean, they've kind of gotten after it. They've been kind of crisp. The pitchers have thrown lots of strikes. Oh, right back up the middle into center field. Laid off man aboard, Brandon Inge has his second hit. That's Brandon's done a lot of that lately. I mean, he's undressed quite a few pitchers here lately with base hits right back up the middle. And that's why that batting average is up there right around 260 now for Brandon. A rocket that Boyer is just trying to get out of the way of. So the Tigers have another hit. Go ahead, run is on now as Alex Avila steps in, a walk and a run score. Ooh, a strike on the outer edge that Avila disagreed with. 
you look at Boyer's arm, that last fastball, 95 miles an hour with some late life to it. Take a look at this fastball in the late movement once it gets in the strike zone. At this velocity, his numbers should be a little bit better than what they are. Fox cracks thought that was a shade outside. So did Avila. Look at that movement. One ball, one strike and outs. Boyer pitched with Atlanta back in 2005, his first year in the major leagues. Also pitched briefly with St. Louis last year. Three teams last season Atlanta, St. Louis, Arizona. That's hit on one hop at second base. Nice play by Ojeda. There's one, and the relay is a double play. Ojeda can play some defense, whether he's playing second base or whether he's playing some shortstop. His glove works. There's no debate about this. This ball was a missile off the bat of Avila. He knocked him down, then he gave Drew a nice firm feed, and they had no problem turning it over. As a matter of fact, Brandon Inns running from first base had to pause momentarily to make sure Ojeda wasn't going to catch that ball on the line. Two gone for Danny Worth. Danny had a double to drive in a run, and he's also walked in this game on base twice. That runs back into the strike zone for strike one. High chop towards second. Ojeda will charge this one. And that is that for Detroit. Starts with a promising base hit that fizzles in the end. And we go to the seventh. All-Star game in Anaheim helps set your favorite Tigers to this year's Midsummer Classic by voting up to 25 times at Tigers.com. Vote early, vote off, and vote today at Tigers.com. There are many Tigers that are worthy of your vote. Please help them out. And hopefully the old English team will be represented well at the Big A. No doubt. I think they will be. There's one guy that may be there, Verlander. Bonine back to work. It is a 5-5 game as we go to the seventh. And there is strike one. Chris Young leading it off. He had a huge two-run single. That was in the fifth inning. They tied the game at four at that point. Young LaRoche and then Abreu. Shattered bat roll toward the pitcher Bonine who throws him up. Wow. Get off me, ball. I mean, Bonine got in his kitchen. That's getting in the kitchen. Take a look at this. He just saw him off in half. One out. Here comes LaRoche. 
Well, this game obviously now will be decided by the bullpens, and uh, there is a stark contrast between the two teams in that area. We mentioned the bullpen ERA for the Diamondbacks is over seven. Tigers bullpen ERA 2.94. They are tied with Minnesota's pen for the best DRA in the American League. Oh, and two on LaRoche. Oh, nine came on, got a strike out on the ground out in the sixth, and now a bounce out right back to the mound here in the seventh. And he's thrown eight pitches, all eight for strikes. First one that missed the strike zone. One and two. LaRoche with a single and two strikeouts. Galarraga started this game, had to be relieved in the fifth inning. Thomas came on, and then Bonine in the sixth. That's back up the middle into center. Base hit. So LaRoche has his second hit. And an even 10 now for Arizona in the hit column. Tony Abreu. Abreu is 0 for 3. Strike one. Ray, who played for the Dodgers parts of 07 and 09. He was the player to be named later in the deal that sent John Garland to the Dodgers. The 0 1 pitch is a strike call, the 1 2 now on Abreu. If uh, Brian Rung is going to give you that pitch. Couple of inches off the plate inside. You may as well go back in there again and see if he'll give you strike three. Not sure if that was a knuckleball or a curveball from Bonan. Bonine has said that uh, his curveball has been so good this year. You see the grip and the spin and the action on the baseball that he doesn't throw that many knuckleballs because he's had such a great curveball all year. Cannot underestimate the work that he has done out of that Tigers bullpen. Popped up. Third base side. Brandon is under it. Two outs. No, you really can't. And, and it's. I think a role that is so underappreciated because everybody talks about the back end, but boy, those guys in the middle and even early in games, underappreciated. They have kept the Tigers in lots of games this year, Bonai, Thomas, Lee, whoever it is. And that has allowed the Tigers offense to come back in lots of games. And because of the offensive players that the Tigers have, but boy, has the front end been good. Two gone for Para. Wave and a miss. Single to start the sixth inning and then eventually scored the game's tying run. Lifted to the air to center. Rayburn going back. Has room and the side retired. Bonine pitches a scoreless seven. Here comes Rayburn, David, and Ordonia.
series against the Diamondbacks coverage begins at 6.30 with Tigers Live, followed by the game at 7. Tigers baseball presented by Bill Tire tomorrow evening on Fox Sports Detroit and in Fox Sports HD. And the return of Rick Porcello to the rotation. First time since June 9th he'll make a start for Detroit. Yeah, he had to go in for a little uh, tune-up. And uh, hopefully uh, Rick has figured out some things which will allow him to get back to uh, the way that he pitched as a rookie when he was brilliant on the Tigers mound. Porcello and Jackson tomorrow. Meanwhile, it's Rayburn, Damon, and Ordonez here in the seventh. Tigers have been out hit 10 6. Tied at five runs apiece. Tapped foul, one ball, one strike. Boyer came on in the sixth and now working here in the seventh. Well, Phil Cope beginning to heat up in the Detroit bullpen. Last year's start of the season with Atlanta was traded to St. Louis and then picked up off the waiver wire by the Diamondbacks. The 1 1. Shortstop Drew on a line. He picked that one up. One away. Bring up Johnny Damon. Damon has scored twice, had an infield single, and scored a run in the fifth. Rolled foul down the first baseline. So Brookie was third on that list of players that played games in the 80s behind Tran and Luke. You are correct. Wow. I didn't know Brookie got that much playing time. Actually, I was really surprised by that too when I saw the list. My guess was Trammell, but he was second on that list of most games by a Tiger in the 80s. Lou was first, and I saw Brookings' name and thought, hmm. He played a lot of games, but not that many. I was watching Tigers Weekly. I believe it was, uh, I don't know, yesterday, two days ago. Ryan Field was talking to the catchers. He talked to Avila, he talked to Lair, he talked to Lamont, he talked to Leland. And uh, I did not know, but Brookie said that he was pressed into duty one night as an emergency catcher. And the game went extra innings. And, uh, he actually said that was one of his more memorable games of his career when he was president duty to catch and uh, he got through it probably memorable because his uh, heart was beating so hard. Yeah. So he says Sparky said can you do it and uh, Brookie said I'll knock down a few for you Sparky. One and two on Johnny Damon. Two balls two strikes. Damon's last home run was against the Chicago White Sox on May the 18th. And it was Johnny's third of the year. Damon also had a walk off against the Angels back on May 1st. Tie game here in the seventh tonight. Two and two on Damon. An 80s look, yeah, which is coming back actually. It all comes full circle. The seventh inning, by the way, has been a huge inning for the Tigers. We've talked about this a couple of times, but they're a plus 27 in the seventh inning. They've scored 43, and the opponents have scored 16. Kenny Rogers in the house, or a facsimile. The 2 2. Bouncing ball hit to the shortstop through.
two away. He's going to bring up Maglio. Ordonia has had the two run homer in the first off Dontrell Willis. It was his ninth of the year. Also had a single in the fifth inning. Two out of three tonight for Max. Wave and a miss. Boyer's done a nice job since coming out in the sixth inning. Gave up a leadoff single to Brandon Inge in the sixth. Then got a double play and has not allowed a runner since. Oh and two. Lane Boyer is out of Marietta, Georgia. Went to high school at Walton High School in Marietta. A lot of talent coming out of Georgia each year as well. The O2 is high. We talk about the big states that produce a lot of talent like Texas and Florida and California, but Georgia's right up there too. Roll toward third foul. They're handed there by Gene Lamont. Find a nice kid to give it to. Picking and grinning. We see you, Gino. The one two pitch. Get away all the way to the backstop. Two balls, two strikes. Well, you're 28 years old. He'll be 29 in July. So the Georgia kid was drafted by Atlanta. And came up in their organization. The 2-2 on the ground off the end of the bat. Ojeda at second base will throw out Maglio. It's a 1-2-3 inning. Seven in the books, and you're watching Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tires. His total of last year. Cabrera had to leave the game with dizziness, and Montero with a home run as well for Arizona, his first of the year. It is a 5 5 game as we go to the eighth, and there's some rain on our doorstep as well, so the grounds crew is at the ready. Starting to cool off here a little bit. Rusty Ryle is pinch hitting. Be 
followed by Johnson and then Drew. That's inside one ball one strike. That's inside at low two balls one strike on Ryle. Bonite is out there for another inning of work. Eddie this year opponents are batting just 145 against him in the seventh inning beyond so late in games he's been really good hopefully that will continue here tonight. Ryle is out of Ponca City Oklahoma. Made his big league debut last year with the Diamondbacks, appearing in 30 games. Breaking ball from Bonine, bouncing in there, three balls, two strikes. Johnson waiting on deck. The 3 2 pitch popped him up. Shallow right field. Guillen goes back to the grass. One away here in the eighth. And that breaking ball there at 76 miles an hour, excuse me, 77 miles an hour, but and Bonine has also thrown a fastball at 90. Those reading goals, courtesy of Comcast. Looks like another pitching change here with Johnson due up. They've had Phil Coke warming up, and Eddie Bonine does his job. He was seven of seven in first pitch strikes, but that's not necessarily what gets it done. But when you change the eye levels of the hitters, the way that Bonine was changing eye levels, going in, going out, going up, going down, uh, you're going to have your way with a team that struggles offensively, and that's exactly what Bonine did. That's our bell tire, pitch by pitch. So Bonine is out of there. After two scoreless, gives up one hit, no walks, one strikeout, gives way to Phil Coke. With one away here in the eighth inning in a 5 5 game. And Coke has been in quite a few games already for his new club, the Tigers. And his work, just like the rest of the bullpen, has been really good. Coke also has four wins, like Thomas, the other left hander in the bullpen. Very good earned run average, and the league not doing all that well against Phillip. One and one on Johnson. Double scored a run. He also has a walk tonight. I told uh, Phil that I call him Philip on the air every now and then. He says, No one calls me Philip except my mom when she's 
mad at me. Well, the list just expanded then. <laughs> High pop up. Here comes Bosch. Still coming. And there are two gone. Only when she's mad at him, though. That's what she said. So I'm sure she probably. He doesn't call him Philip that much because he doesn't seem like he would uh, get mom upset. I wonder if mom throws in the middle name too. When they really get upset, you know they use all three names. They sure did. And that's when you knew you were in hot water. Here's Stephen Drew. Well, Drew's had a couple of huge at bats his last two times up. RBI singles both times. And he hits one on the ground to second base. This will be routine for Guillen. Philip Cope does a nice job. One, two, three in it. Bottom of the east coming up. by Comerica Bank. Strength and stability since 1849. Wall side windows for a free and home estimate. Call 1-800-521-7800. And by Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Back here at Comerica Park as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning in a 5-5 game. Defensive changes now. Ryle stays in the game and he will play third base. Meanwhile, Abreu has moved over to second base. Chad Qualls is the new pitcher. Uh, when the season began, he was their closer. It was Qualls, and you can see that he has 12 saves this year in 16 chances. But take a look at the earned run average. It's over eight. And the opponents are hitting almost 400 against him. I guess that's why he's not closing. Don Kelly leads it on. Yeah, that would be a pretty good indication of. Uh, being relieved of your duties as the closer. There is nothing more demoralizing to a team to have a lead late, and for whatever reason, that lead be lost by the back end of your bullpen. That's a fair ball behind the bag, fielded by LaRoche, and Kelly is out. He's going to bring up Bosch. Walls last year for Arizona had 24 saves and 51 appearances. Bosch tonight is 0 for 3. You go with the new uh, Eminem CD today? You know, I was uh, I was a little bit too busy to go get it, but it came out today, right? Yeah, it did. I can't wait. I know Bosch said he was going to get it. Big fan of uh, Eminem. He is. Eminem has a lot of fans out there uh, of young kids that like to listen to rap. They like Eminem a lot. Bosch said he first met him when he was 13 out in uh, California. 
Went to a show of his out there in L.A. We got to meet him backstage, and has liked his music ever since. He walks out to one of his tunes. Here's the one-one. Two and one on Bosch. A couple of strikeouts and a bounce out tonight for Brennan. Ian waiting on deck. Here's the 2 1. This game has been tied since the sixth inning when the D backs got a run in the sixth to make it 5 5. Here's where, uh, as a pitcher, you want to throw a strike, but you really don't want to throw a strike because you know Bosch is dangerous and doesn't really have to be a good pitch for him to hurt you here. 3 and 2 on Brennan. That was a well located fastball there from Qualls. Well located fastball. Breaking ball is hammered foul. Bosch here at home coming into this game. Had 20 RBIs in 23 games at Comerica Park. I mean, the numbers just continue to be astounding, and just really his overall numbers at home are way over the top. 388 at Comerica. He rolls that one foul. Here are those home numbers. Four of his nine home runs have come here at spacious Comerica Park. Too many ballparks around the league that can hold Bosch's bat. Nope, they can't. Be the ninth pitch coming up in this at bat. One out here in the eighth, tied at five. And he lost him. They want the appeal, and they're going to get one. Let's take a look at these numbers in comparison to uh, Brennan Bosch and the very talented Jason Hayward of the Atlanta Braves. Of course, uh, a lot of people have heard about Hayward and where he ranks in that league, but Brendan Bosch in 19 fewer games, his numbers in several categories as good or better than Jason Hayward's. What a start Brendan Bosch is off to in his major league career, as is Jason Hayward. We'll see Hayward on this next road trip as well. Go ahead, run is on now for Guillen. Bouncing ball foul first base side. Carlos can find a gap. He will score Bosch. Brennan has enough speed to score from first base on a double. Tigers have only six hits in this game. They've been out hit 10 6. But a 4 0 lead get away tonight. Runner going at a bouncing ball back toward the middle. Drew will throw to first in time. Bosch is in there at second base. I don't know if that was a hit and run or not, but had it not been a hit and run, Brendan Bosch got a great jump off first base. He might have been able to steal this base. Look at the jump. Tremendous jump, and you see Drew going over. Uh, to cover the bag on the throw from the catcher and was right there. So with two outs, now we'll see if Inge can come up with the hit. He's already two for three tonight, single and a double. 
first pitch is in there for a strike slides in 0 and 1. Brandon had a double to start things off in the second later scored a run. He has now had 10 hits on this homestand. Inside one ball one strike. All three of the outfielders can really throw for the Diamondbacks. So Bosch has got to really get a really good jump off second base. If Inge is fortunate enough of getting a base hit. Two and one. Bosch had a one out walk. He's standing at second with two gone. Alberti warming up in case he's needed. Driven in the air to center field. Young is on the run. Not going to get it over his head. Bosch will come around to score. And just picking him up and laying him down. He's coming to third base. He has a triple. Six five Tigers. Qualls got him himself in a two one fastball count and Brandon. He goes down and he gets it and hits a seed over the center fielder's head and Chris Young. Young was playing in shallow because he wanted to try to throw Brad Bosch out and he got burned by Inge. Those knees are feeling good these days. Now let's see if the Tigers get the insurance run in. First triple of the year for Inge and it comes at a huge spot. A run in the bottom of the eighth to break the tie. 6 5 Detroit. Avila has walked in this game and scored a run. It's a real nice at bat by Brennan Bosch. A 10 pitch at bat to get the walk, to get himself on base. Very nicely done, young man. Yo, 1 2 Avila is outside. One ball, one strike. Tigers now have their seventh hit. That's their first run since getting one in the fifth inning. Inge now has had two three hit games on this homestand. That's why his average continues to climb. Line drive to left, base hit. There's an insurance run. Inge comes around to score. Avila gets it done. Seven five. Looked like Alex uh, went down and got himself a pretty nice pitch as well. It's down, it's at the knees, it's right on the outer edge of the plate, and he hit it just like Qualls threw it. It's a big knock. Nine RBIs for Avila. Here's Danny Worth. He is showing butt. He lays one down. Third base side. No chance. Base hit. Second hit tonight for Worth. He saw Ryle playing way back there at third base. Took advantage of it. The Tigers now have nine hits. That'll bring up Rayburn. Skipper approves. Here's Rayburn. One ball, one strike. Ryan with an RBI tonight. It came on a sack fly back in the second. Boyer had two scoreless innings out of the Diamondbacks bullpen. Qualls comes on here in the eighth and gives up a walk, a triple, and two singles. Good pitch on the outer edge, right at the knees, one and two. 
activity in their bullpen. Demel, the right hander, warming up. Low. Two two on Raver. Up to Montero and Young do up in the ninth inning. That's three, four, and five in the Diamondbacks lineup. So that extra run the Tigers got huge, and we'll see if they can get some more. Swing and a miss, and Rayburn is out of there. So are the Tigers, but they send seven men to the plate. Scored two big runs. Jose Valverde will try and close it out. Now the Tigers leading at seven to five here is an update on McDonald's player of the game voting. You've been voting all night long and so far it looks like this. Brandon Inge leading the way with 37 percent a slight lead over Maglio. And Galarraga 12 percent tonight. We'll have the final results on Tigers live following this one. Hopefully a Tigers win Valverde trying to close it out. The numbers speak for themselves. Really, nothing more I could add to them. He's been tremendous. Bonus batting just 111 against Valverde this year. And his first pitch is in there for a strike on Justin Upton. Speaking of tremendous, I guess Steven Strasburg did okay against the White Sox. There were many that thought that, that he would be tested for the first time against that White Sox offense after facing Cleveland and the Pittsburgh Pirates, his first two starts. Driven to left field and Bosch will make the play. One out. Strasburg apparently is legit. No doubt. The real deal. Here's Montero. The all important first out has been recorded. Montero had a homer earlier in this game. It came against Galarraga in the fourth inning. Bonine had two scoreless innings. Coke two thirds, and now a third for Valverde. Well, these uh, Arizona Diamondbacks—they uh, know all about the act of Jose Valverde, nicknamed Papa Grande. He got his start in the big leagues. With them and was really good out of their bullpen. Here's the 0 2. Swing and a miss. Valverde 
And there's a little bit of that act. A little extra. We gave him a little extra, too. Don't rub it in, Valverde. So there are two outs, and here comes the crowd at better than 37,000 tonight. One more out to get him. The Tigers have a seven game winning streak. As they hope to continue their dominance against National League teams in this ballpark. Young is their last chance. And he pops it up. Should do it. Carlos to the grass. Seven in a row. A one, two, three inning for Valverde. And the Tigers with two in the bottom of the eighth win it here tonight by a score of seven to five. We'll step aside, come back.